there guys and welcome welcome back to the channel now one of the very few things people have been asking more and more of me are yet again what are the best champions to give awakening gems now in my opinion and now that banquet event has ended we have definitely had an influx of oh, six star awakening gems available but before we get any further in this video, I do want to put a very big disclaimer and emphasis that uh, your usage of Awakening Gems should entirely depend on you, your goals in the game, and also your progression level. Like, those of you who have larger accounts should feel more free using your Awakening Gems on whatever. Uh, because what else are you going to do with them? Uh, and if you want to awaken an Iceman, go with Awakening an Iceman. I did. I gave my 6-star Iceman a Mutant Gem. I gave a gem to any new champion that I pulled that I can't pull from a basic pull, basically. And so on and so forth. So if you do have some champions that you enjoy using and you can have a larger account, I think you can be more free with how you use your gems. But if you do have smaller accounts, obviously there are inherently champions that will offer you more benefit than others from being awakened. And uh, this video is primarily meant for people like that. And keep in mind that this is my opinion, my subjective opinion, and uh, you might disagree. And that's fine. Let me know if you do. And uh, I know for a fact that, you know, I can't list all the champions that many of you will say are absolutely worth the gem as well. The point of this video is to kind of like point out the most obvious champions that I would easily give a gem to if my account was, you know, significantly smaller and I would need to awaken those champions. Also, since I'm a kind soul and you guys have been quite awesome, here is basically the video quick write-up version. So if you do want to pay notice to it, I also have included the SIG levels, basically what is required. So if it says 60, then basically, yeah, that means 60. If it says 200 and nothing else, then it just means the champion definitely needs that SIG 200. If it says 1 or A, AHAP or AHAP, it just means as high as possible. Because Overseer gets a significant benefit from being awakened to begin with, but getting his SIG higher will improve his damage. Similar to Mr. Fantastic, it's cool to get him awakened, but the higher you get his SIG level, and there is no one single sweet spot to aim for, the more power he'll gain. So that's kind of the idea there. With champions like Kin, Kingpin, there are three sweet spots for him, Sig 1, 65 and 200, Falcon is similar like Overseer, Sig 1 is good, it gives you longer lock-on duration and slight damage boost, but if you do give him 6 stones, then you do get more damage, so and so forth. Valkyrie's thresholds are 60, 130 and 200, just so you guys know, and uh, if you do have any more questions here, then you can ask them in the comment section. But this is the base idea of kind of like the best champions to give Awakening Gems to, in my opinion, from each class. And respectively, their signature stone situation as well. Like with Ghost, as high as possible. With Nimrod, as high as possible. But, you know, even at lower sig, it's still a meaningful benefit. So on and so forth. So, you can take a snapshot of this. I will show it again at the end of the video. You can do it then as well. But let's get to it. So, let's start with the science class. I do think that Scorpion is one of those situations in the game where I was initially wrong. I was initially quite skeptical as to how necessary his signature ability is. But after having taken Scorpion to rank 4 and used him with him being awakened, I did end up giving him a generic gem as well, by the way. And then having played him at the rank 3 without, I can say that the SIG ability is more useful than it initially appears because that unblockable on Town's does come in handy either for Battlegrounds or for Alliance War stuff. That regeneration you get for in Alliance Wars and especially in Battlegrounds as well definitely can be extremely clutch in plenty of situations. And in general, Scorpion is one of the best science champions at the moment in the game, in my opinion. Therefore, I would not feel bad about giving him a gem at all whatsoever. Next up is Things. Things role has definitely increased in the last six months in this game, not only because of Battlegrounds, also partially because of Alliance War, having Shock and Bleed bio, uh, hazard Shift nodes, and obviously the Incursions, and he is a vital part of pushing to Zone 25 in Incursions, therefore I would absolutely not bat an eye in giving him a gem, provided you should be able to take him to SIG 200 in a very, very, you know, short amount of time. Otherwise, it might be a wasteful use of Signature Stone because you might, you know, awaken him meanwhile, I suppose. 
Next up is Overseer. Overseer's stock definitely has been kind of increasing and then staying relatively steady and stable. At the moment, he's a great alliance or offensive option as well. And obviously, he has kind of like revitalized himself with a great amount of success in Battlegrounds. And uh, yeah, I, I would be perfectly fine giving him a gem too. And the next up is Mr. Fantastic, which I think is still criminally underrated. I can, for the life of me, understand why do people have such hard time, you know, enjoying or relying on Mr. Fantastic. I understand that he's not the biggest yellow damage number type of champion. He might be a bit slowish at times for the Balgron standards, but he really isn't all that slow. But the coolest thing about him is the absolute control and stability and predictability of his fights and just security that you have throughout them. And obviously also the amount of utility he has is quite insane. I definitely would not mind giving him a gem. Moving on to skill class, Kingpin, obviously the best skill champion in the entire game. He's a great rank up, even on Awakened, but Awakened, he's a bit more of a savage because he starts the fight with more of his rage charges, which improves his combat power rate, which means you can get your specials quicker, which means you can get more damage and more rage charges. And every time your overpower expires, you also have a chance to gain plenty of new rage charges and just kind of like maintain your loops much better and more aggressive. Effectively, it just means he has more damage and combat power rate, and it's well worth it. Falcon, again, another champion that has been revitalized relatively, you know, with the addition of Battlegrounds. And he's in the situation where lock on give lasting longer, two seconds, is already quite a major deal, especially in the fights where that lock on is absolutely vital, like in the victory track meta currently in Battlegrounds. Um, or anywhere else and then higher sig just gives him more critical damage rating which also is good and useful and fine but it's kind of like what sig one or then if you do have the spare six stones you can give him more for extra damage but just having him awakened already gives him massive benefit just like nick fury nick fury is uh, another champion where just giving him that awakening gem even if you don't have six stones means a huge deal to him however there is quite significant difference on the defense whether you have a low sig or high sig neck for those of you who are at a higher progression level higher account level i think there's absolutely nothing wrong at this point in giving nick fury the signature stones if you are actively playing balgrounds i do think they are better used elsewhere but if balgrounds is something that you focus on then i can completely justify sigging up and nick fury as well but in general for vast 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 majority of the player base Keep him at SIG 1 and you'll basically get most of the benefits in majority of the areas, especially offensively. Now, Valkyrie. Valkyrie is worth ranking Unawakened absolutely 1000%. However, Awakened, obviously, she does get some uh, extremely useful utility. But with her Awakening is typically the situation where you do want to get her to SIG 200. Not only she does have amazing prestige, but also just having access to that stun immunity and immunity well, basically unstoppable immunity at just one of each pierce and bulwark buffs does make her much more reliable and stable counter. Her sweet spots, I believe, were 60 and 130 in order to reduce the amount of buffs you needed, because if she's sig 1, you would need four of these buffs. If she's sig 60, you need three, which is the highest amount you can typically hold without counting the passives. If she's sig 130, you need two of each, and sig 200, it's just the one which is quite important but i do not think there's anything wrong with giving her a gem and shang chi is another champion where initially i was very skeptical at the point of giving him an awakening gem but there are more and more important situations coming through where it is extremely useful or beneficial to have the ability to trigger his chi strikes and everything else through opponent's block as well as to be able to crit through opponent's block, especially combined with your level 2, you can kind of use him as a discount massacre if need be when push comes to shove. And obviously there is slight damage increase. However, the damage increase itself I think is quite pointless. I don't think there's much reason to give Shang-Chi any 6 stones. I have never given a single 6 stone to this guy and I never will. That being said, my Shang-Chi still somehow ended up relatively high sig, but in general, the difference in between 10% to 20% extra burst damage on his, like, special attacks just isn't worth it, I'd say. But just having him awakened does unlock a new cool set of utility. Moving on to Mutant Glass, we have Archangel, one of the best champions in the game to give a gem to in general. 
do not listen to anybody that talks about Archangel being SIG 112 or whatever else. It's just one of those community stupid things that somehow caught on and people are still talking about it. Is Archangel SIG 20? Fine, leave him at SIG 20. Is Archangel SIG 40? Fine, leave him at SIG 40. You do not need or want to give him many SIG stones. He will work just about equal at any of those SIG levels. Yes, it, you know, at SIG 1 he has 25%, so you would need 4 neurotoxins. And then at SIG 112 you can get to like 3 neurotoxins in order to completely shut down opponent's abilities. But from a practical manner, I had a SIG 200 5 star Archangel for a while, and then I took my low SIG rank 3 6 star, and I did not have a single fight where I noticed any major difference. That is not to say that, you know, there will never be a time that a higher SIG would not have helped, but in general, Archangel is just one of those champions. If he works, he works. If he doesn't, he doesn't. And I definitely would not ever try to get him to like SIG 200 personally, unless there's going to be some very, very, very good reason that I can't possibly imagine right now. Domino, another champion completely revitalized by Battlegrounds, and also some of the new nodes, because we do have some weapon heavy nodes floating around and some other things that do make Domino kind of like more current champion these days. And at this point, especially to the people, primarily to the people, let's face it here, I don't think Domino is the best mutant awakening gem target if you don't care about Battlegrounds. So let's just get that out. If you do care about Battlegrounds, I think it's baseline criminal to use an Awakened Domino in your deck, and you should 1000% Awaken her and SIG her up immediately, because there is a massive difference in between taking on a low SIG or a high SIG Domino in virtually every single scenario. So, yeah. If you care about Battlegrounds, Domino for sure. If you don't, there are better options. Now we have Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride is one of those champions where you get majority of the benefit just from having her at SIG 1. She does not need super high SIG. However, if you do want to take her up to like, quote unquote, the sweet spot, her sweet spot would be something around 60 to 70, where she does get a significant increase in her combat power rate whilst phased. And uh, that can, in situational situations, be helpful and slightly cheesy. But in general, Kitty Pride is pretty much perfectly fine at SIG 1. But yeah, if you do want to beef her up slightly, get her to 670, and obviously she's an amazing target for a generic gem as well. Toad is a typical as uh, higher the better type of champion. The higher you get his sig, the more damage he gets, and the longer is the passive stun duration, so that is quite helpful as well. There is no s single sweet spot, but in general I think Toad is one of the more decent targets for Awakening Gem in the Mutant class as well. Moving on to tech class, it's Ghost, and Ghost is a typical as high as possible champion. You can see that there's absolutely no curve at all on her SIG level, which means that every single SIG stone matters as much as the previous one, and every single one of them increases your phasing power gain slightly. And 1000% worth to give her a generic gem as well. And Nimrod is pretty much a similar case, but... There is a problem in Nimrod, I think more so with Ghost, in the sense that people underestimate how much benefit you get from Nimrod SIG ability and what there is a massive difference in between having a low SIG Nimrod and a high SIG Nimrod. Because your special attack effects do not only gain potency but also duration, which means that if your Energize previously improved your combat power rate by 80%, but you have 35% increased potency, that's much stronger Energize, that much lasts much longer. And the end result is massive in the actual fight. And that is the difference why many people underestimate Nimrod offensively and think that he's not too great against anybody that is mutant or gains a ton of region. It is because they probably most of the time are playing low sig Nimrod. Having access to a high sig Nimrod definitely makes you feel completely different about the champion in any kind of like generic matchup. And more damage and you have more kind of user friendliness with increased windows of opportunity to benefit from your energized and energy vulnerability. Warlock's Awakened ability for the longest of times I think has been considered to be one of those that's not particularly important. However, Warlock as a champion himself is definitely a champ that has withstood the test of time and has maintained its own relevance and importance. And this is one more of those Battleground signature situations where if you do not care much about Battlegrounds, I do not think Warlock is the best Awakening Gem target for you. 
if you do care about battlegrounds then however warlock is an amazing gem target and there is quite significant difference in having warlock at low sig no sig or sig 200 because warlock is extremely versatile champion that works great offensively and defensively and he has been usable and functional for vast majority of the metas that we have had in the game the trick with warlock or the problem with warlock typically is that he's not the hardest hitting champion for the crazy amount of utility his damage is acceptable but is definitely not at the top of the list however his sig is quite literally just that more damage and in case of warlock when champion is that ut utilitarian and useful any added extra bit of damage that you can generate is worth it and therefore i think giving sigs and gems to warlock is also worth it now next up cosmic class very easy hyperion gem him up get him to like sig 20 and you're fine the rest of the sig scales horribly hyperion has one of the worst returns of investment for each signature stone in the game this sig scales awful as you can see there's basically no difference at all there is a slight bump in the beginning that's why i'm saying 20 not uh one but even at sig one there's going to be hardly any difference but yeah just get him sig 20 you'll be fine and then ever forget that you can even give him signature stones one of the best targets for generic gem as well just because of the sheer utility the man possesses next up is hercules who i think is the best champion in the game to give a gem to if you have a hercules and if you have a generic gem you're doing something wrong that generic gem should be used on that hercules already and that's it awaken him great already massive improvement and then take him as high as possible because every single moment on that indestructibility will save your bottom plenty of times that's it <laughs> nothing to add null is one more of those champions where there is virtually no difference from having null at sig zero or sig 20 the difference is like one living abyss debuff but there is a massive difference in between having a null at sig zero or 20 and 200 especially in shorter fights and that was one of the reasons why i kind of perhaps slightly underestimated null for the longest of times because i was reluctant to give null the sig stones but after i did i definitely noticed quite a massive jump in usability for shorter to medium fight length fights because null in its essence is a ramp up champion especially when you're using him at low sigs and he kind of ramps up slightly weirdly as well and then there is level one and the delay and only then you kind of get to your groove but you can basically kind of bypass it or be much more fast and effective with much higher damage output if you have him at high sig unawakened low signal will do fine for you in a base if you really want to use them there or anywhere else but low signal will be useful in many many more places mainly because 90 plus percent of the fights that people typically take are short to medium length and he absolutely wants to be super high sig to function reasonably well in those fights Moving on CGR, I think at this point, if you have a larger account, there's nothing wrong to give a gem to CGR. Do not waste your SIG stones, you can leave your CGR at SIG 1 if you please do. I do not think this is something for smaller accounts in general, but just giving CGR that access to nullify has proven itself to be extremely useful in plenty of situations. And this is similar situation with Galen, where I don't think Galen should be a primary target to give a gem to if you have a smaller account and there are plenty of possibly you know more meaningful and beneficial ways to use that gem at the same time that signature ability is proving itself useful time and time again and uh, be that you know specific lanes in alliance war be that battleground specific metas so on and so forth so in general Galen is just such a great burst down champion that i think it is important to give him the ability to nuke down as many different matchups as possible and you do want to have him awaken for that he does have a six sweet spot of 60 i believe or close to that let me just double check here yeah 660 is fine you do not need to go above 660 for gallon and the final class we have tigra i think is the best target for mystic gem if you don't know how to play tigra learn how to play tigra if you are not particularly good with tigra practice and get better amazing champion in my opinion one of the best mystic champions in the game and also the best target for an awakening gem because in my opinion again she absolutely has to be awakened and has to be high sig 
there is a massive difference of her SIG functionality in between low and high SIG. And I would say you do want to get her to SIG 200 as quickly as possible. But, uh, you know, starting SIG 160, I think it's usable. But typically, you know, it's not, it's not even one of those as high as possible situations where if you have her at SIG 50 or 60, it just won't matter. You do want to have that SIG 160 to 180 to 200, ideally. And there is quite quite big level of importance to that next up dr doom situation sig 1 or sig 200 sig 1 already gives you additional uh abilities such as gaining your own power gain buff when you nullify the opponents ability to replace your shock whenever you do nullify stuff from opponent as well and that is obviously super useful fighting awakened doom is much harder than fighting an unawakened doom as well which is something that could be important obviously when thinking of him as a defender but then the next level is he either goes from sig 1 to 200 because the last thing his sig can do besides prestige obviously is also cheese factor in a handful of different matchups and nodes where you can basically infinitely doom slap your opponents if you do catch them there against the wall so again he's sig 1 to sig 200 type of champion there is no real point in leaving him at sig 70 let's say next up is wiccan wiccan is a champion that has been gaining more respect from the player base and more popularity as well i happen to have a rank for wiccan myself due to alliance for reasons and uh, he is a champion where you just kind of want to have his sig as high as possible just having him at sig one is super helpful as is because you can block unblockable attacks from cosmic champions which is super important and also can replace shock with degen if opponents are immune to shock which enables him to do a ton more matchups so sig one is already a massive benefit but just making him higher sig or as high as possible sig will increase his damage output which he kind of does need or want in a casual matchup in a matchup where he works insanely well you know that isn't going to be a much of a difference but in any matchup where he doesn't get to neutralize a ton of buffs or be immune to a ton of things then you do want to have him as high six possible because whenever you do create plasmas in between incinerates and shocks you have up to 50 percent chance not to consume that shock which will effectively every time this ability triggers give you additional high damage debuff so it is quite important for his damage output next up i actually think long shot is well worth the mystic gem now especially again this is more of a balgrans type of situation where Having him awakened makes him significantly tougher as a defender. And just because of that, I do think it's worth it. He's as high as the higher, the better type of champion as well. But yeah, if you do play Balgrounds and take Balgrounds seriously, I do think that access to awakened longshot is quite important. Just the sheer amount of metas and matchups that he nukes down is quite important and extremely useful. Unawakened longshot is much, much easier to deal with on defense than awakened one, especially because you do have a chance to nullify your opponent's precision buff every time the decks and typically long shot fights are quite dodgy and dexy so that is something you do want to have access to and last one is juggernaut i don't think juggernaut absolutely needs to be awakened i think it's worth to rank up juggernaut unawakened it does not affect his damage at all whatsoever but realistically, especially offensively, the only ability that you care about is your chance to nullify. And uh, his only nullification is on his SIG, aside from stagger on his heavy attacks. His SIG does scale quite awful, so getting him to SIG 40 is fine. That's it. Getting him to SIG 40 and you'll be fine. And then you're going to have 25% chance on hit with 10 unstoppables to nullify opponent's buffs, which means you will be able to nullify like a buff on every combo on average and uh, that will feed your mystic dispersion and enable you to be much more aggressive so and so forth and in general i do think it is absolutely worth giving Jug juggernaut a gem as well should you have one free so as i said i will uh pop up this uh screen here overall you know all of these champions listed i think you know are definitely 1000 percent worth their class respective six star gems when it comes to generic, again, it entirely depends how far you are in the game, but typically, you know, if you use gem class or generic, you might as well. But if you had basically all of these options available and basically in 
and, and only the one generic gem to use, then the best champions, I think, to use a generic gem in the game at the moment overall would be Hercules, Kitty Pride, Archangel, Nimrod, Hyperion, Tigra, Kingpin, and Ghost. I think those are the best champions that are doing the most, the most powerful in the game right now, and also the ones that would benefit the most from those. But there you go. That is it for now. I hope you guys found this useful, and I'm going to catch you guys later. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the